Hey guys, today I want to give you a comparison between two stable diffusion tools, Runway ML Gen 1 and Automatic 11.11. I've already covered Automatic 11.11 in several videos and some people told me why don't you use Runway, it's so much easier to use. So I decided to prepare some video footage and see what we can do with it in Runway and in Automatic 11.11. So in the first step I will create a short video animation with Blender, but you can also use your own clips as a video input, so this step is not required. Next I'm going to feed this footage into Runway Gen 1 and explain how to create stable diffusion animations with it. Then I will use the same footage as an input for Automatic 11.11 and use the batch image to image function to create a stable diffusion animation. As an optional step, I will explain you how to improve the temporal coherence of the stable diffusion animation by rendering the character and the background separately. And finally, I will wrap it all up and give you my conclusion about the pros and cons of each tool. Now let's get right into it. Okay, now here we are in Blender and I've prepared a little scene with a little Mixamo animation and a basic model that I downloaded from Sketchfab. As I said, it's not required and you can use any video footage you like. But if you want to use Blender and don't know how to set up a scene, I will leave some links down below that could help you to achieve that. It's not that difficult, so don't worry. I've also put a camera into my scene and some camera movements to make it more interesting. Now let's go to the render properties. I'm using EV as the render engine because it's very fast and simple. The resolution is 1024 by 1024 and you could go even lower because we will just render 512 by 512. Now let's set our output folder for the rendering. I'm going to create a new folder. Let's set the output format to FFmpeg video and the container to QuickTime. And let's render our animation. A new video file will be created and I'm speeding up the process so we don't have to wait for so long. You can see how the scene will look like. Nothing great, but that's all what we need. Ok, it's finished. Now let's render the same scene again as an image sequence. Because later on in Automatic 11.11 we will need an image sequence as an input and not a video. While Runway Gen 1 will need a video as an input file. Ok, now let's render it again. And we are done. Now I said before that we are going to perform a second rendering in Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 with separate render passes for the character on the green screen and one only with the background. So let's hide the background scene by shift clicking on the eye icon and the camera icon in the right upper window. And then let's create a green screen in the background. In order to do that, we have to open the shader editor, then switch from object to world, then hit shift A and search for a mix shader and drag it between the background and the world output. Then let's duplicate the background node by clicking shift D, plug it into the second node of the mix shader and set its color to a light green. You can see that the scene gets green, but also the character gets greenish. And in order to fix that, we have to add a light bath node. So again, hit Shift A, then search for light bath, and then connect the is camera ray to the factor of the mix shader. Okay, that was a bit tough, but we are nearly finished. All we need to do is rendering the character with the green screen as an own image sequence. And then when it's done, let's unhide the background model by shift clicking on the eye icon and the camera icon and hide the character by shift clicking on the eye and camera icon of the armature. And as the last step, we render the background scene without the character and then we are done in Blender. So when we are finished, we have three folders one for the background, one for the character and one for the scene. And now comes the more interesting part as we move over to Runway ML. 
Okay, here we are on the website. You can create a free account or simply log in with Google. It's a paid service, but you can create a bunch of stuff before you run out of credits. Now let's log in. And after a few seconds, we are on the start page. Runway offers a lot of great stuff, for example, green screening videos or video manipulation. But we want to create a stable diffusion video, so let's click on Gen 1. And what I must say first and foremost, it's very simple to use. You just need to drag and drop or upload a video file. So let's use the one we created earlier on in Blender. And once it's done, we are good to go. There is a critical limitation in creating stable diffusion video files at the moment, which is that the output video can only be 5 seconds long at most. And in my point of view, that's a very severe limitation and not really suitable for real projects, maybe only to get some impression how the technology works. Now let's see what we can do with it. On the right side you have three buttons for image, presets and prompts. Now let's go to prompt. And let's describe how we want our scene to look like. I'm using a rather sophisticated prompt that I'm also going to use later on with automatic 1111. But basically you can enter any meaningful description into the prompt box. Next we have the image button. We can choose a guiding image and Runway ML will try to stick close to the style and mood of the image. There are some demo images available, but you can also upload your own image which I already did, so let's select it. In the presets section, you can select some styles provided for you by Runway. It's mostly some rather abstract stuff, so use it if you want. Now back to the prompt and let's go to the advanced settings. Here you can change the structural consistency, the weight, seat and frame consistency. It's pretty much self-explanatory. So you can play around with the values and read the description. I already played around with it before. Just be careful not to overdo it, because a free account offers you just a very limited number of renderings. You see I have 17 seconds of renderings left. And I started I think with 32. There are some more interesting settings down below. So for example you can tell Runway that only the foreground should be affected by the rendering or only the background. That means that there is quite a powerful technology working under the hood. Well now let's hit the generate button and see what it can do for us. Well it didn't take that long so let's play the 5 second video. I think the result is not really amazing but it's also not too bad. One thing that I really want to mention is the temporal coherence. There is no flickering and the scene stays very consistent overall. Temporal coherence is a great issue with stable diffusion in general and I think that Runway solved this problem very well. Okay, now I will use up my 12 seconds left on my free account so I can create at least two more renderings using different settings. I'm going to speed up the process. Now here's the second one. One more left for my free account. And here we got the third one. It looks like the best to me, but of course it's only my personal viewpoint. Now that's basically it with Runway Gen 1. You can download the videos to your hard drive and further edit them in a video editing software. I think it has strengths and weaknesses. The rendered videos are not that great, but maybe you can do better ones. The stability of the videos is great. There is hardly any flickering or wobbling like you often see it in stable diffusion. The main restriction in my point of view is that the maximum length of a video can only be 5 seconds which makes it unusable for real projects, but they say that they will increase this limit over time and maybe it will evolve to a good solution. What I also noticed is that Runway is rather good at abstract scenes and not so much with realistic ones, but that's just what I wanted to do in this video, so I don't want to be unfair. Okay, now let's step over to Stable Diffusion Automatic 1111 and see how it compares. Now here we are in the automatic 11.11 .11 web UI. 
I'll leave a link down below how to install it. Let's go to image to image and let's take a look if you've got the ControlNet extension installed. This extension is very helpful to let the output video stick very closely to the movements of the input video. So I would highly recommend you to install this extension. Link down below. Now let's go to the control net settings and increase the number of control nets to a higher value, in my case two, which means that you can use several control nets and achieve an even better guidance for stable diffusion to make the output video stick very closely to your input scene. You also need to check do not append detect map to output or otherwise control net will not be able to work with batch image to image to render your video. Now back to image to image and let's use an image from our image sequence we created before in Blender in order to get started. Then let's activate our first control net, set the preprocessor and model to depth, then switch over to the second control net, enable it and choose a different preprocessor and model. I'm going to use the normal map. Using several control nets with different models achieves a better output for your final video. Now let's drop the same image we used before into our control nets and we are done with this part. Now I'm going to use some LoRa model to enhance our prompt. This step isn't really needed, but it can improve the consistency when you render a video as it puts a high emphasis on the model that you use I will leave a link down below how to install LoRa models. It's not that difficult, but it's also not really required. So I'm using a model of Methali Boardman, but will reduce the weight to something like 0.5. So it doesn't completely look like her, but only gives a little guidance into this direction. Then I enter a rather detailed positive prompt to describe what we want to see in our scene and a negative prompt to describe what we don't want to have in our scene. Next, let's hit the generate button and see what we get. Okay, it's done. You can see that the pose of the output image is very close to the input image, but it's still not what I want to achieve. It looks a bit like what we got in runway, but we can do better. So let's adjust some settings, sampling steps up to 25. Then let's reduce scale and denoising strength considerably, which will force stable diffusion to stick much closer to the input image. Then let's click on the little green recycling button to get a fixed seed, which is very important later when we create our video. And then let's go over to batch image to image and let's enter the path to our input directory. That's the folder with the image sequence we created before in Blender. And let's also define an output directory. That's the folder where the output image sequence will be stored, which we can later convert into a video file and maybe do some post-processing in a video editing software. Now let's hit generate to render our stable diffusion video and then it's done. You see it's more complicated than runway ML, but still quite manageable. And after a few minutes of waiting, we got our final result. I think it looks much better and more consistent than what we got from runway but it still has some flickering in the scene and I can show you a method how to reduce the flickering even further. Maybe you can remember that we created two more image sequences when we prepared the input footage in Blender, one that only contains the character on a green screen and one that contains only the background scene without the character. Now all you have to do is to make another batch image to image rendering with the character on the green screen. So enter the path to that image sequence into the input directory and enter a different path into the output directory where the new image sequence will be stored. Then again do the same with the background scene and when everything is done import both scenes into your video editing software like DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut or Adobe Premiere with the background scene in the back and the character in front and then just remove the green screen from the character. Now here we've got the final clip and you can see that it's smoother and less flickery than the scene we rendered before. Now let's take a look at the final results. On the top you can see what we got out from Runway ML and down below from Automatic 11.11. Let's come to our conclusions. In my point of view, Runway has just a very limited feature set 
but it's quite powerful what you get out of it. While Automatic 1111 has a far greater variety, though you sometimes need to install extensions to get what you want. What I could see is that Runway is rather poor at photorealism, but it's not flickery and stays coherent. I found out that it's much better in abstract scenes and not so much when you really want to render a realistic scene. With Automatic 1111 you can get a much better quality, but it requires more efforts and knowledge and sometimes needs some workarounds. Runway is extremely simple to use, while Automatic 1111 requires some technical understanding to install and run it on your machine. In terms of requirements, Runway doesn't really need much, as it's an online service, while Automatic 1111 requires a powerful machine and a good graphics card, preferably from NVIDIA. If your machine isn't up to these requirements, you can also run it on Google Colab, which is a remote service by Google, and uses their infrastructure, which is quite powerful. I will leave a link down below. There is a great restriction with Runway Gen 1. At this time, the maximum length of videos can be only 5 seconds, and I think that's a very severe restriction, which makes it not really suitable for professional projects. But maybe that's going to change over time. With Automatic 1111, you can do anything you want, and it's only restricted by your own computing power and knowledge. It's also free, as long as you run it on your local machine, while there's a $12 monthly subscription fee at Runway after a free trial. If you need some support, you can get some limited help on the Runway website, but I think you won't really need it because it's really easy to use. For Automatic 1111, there's already a huge online community and you can mostly get any kind of help on different platforms. Overall, I would say that Runway is a very simple, easy way to get into Stable Diffusion, but if you want to make any bigger, more serious projects, I would definitely go with Automatic 1111, though it requires more efforts and knowledge to run it. Of course, this can change over time, and it's only my very own personal view. Well, I think that's all for today. I hope this video could be of some value for you. If you have some questions, just post them down in the comments. So bye for today and hope to see you in the next one.